and here it is. So now, if I open the code list, you see what's happening. We have 47 codes, and each code only has has been applied very few times. Yeah, maximum probably I guess three times. So we have a long list of codes, and there's only one aspect of it. Yeah, and we have 10 or 12 aspects in the whole data set. And if you have 50 codes um, for each aspect, well, we easily have 500 codes for this very, very small data set. So we have to do something about that. You can start like that if that feels close to how you would like to work. And it might not be that you always work like that, but it may be that that data set kind of leads you to do this because you're not very familiar with it and you want to do open coding, you have no framework to adjust to, um, and so on. Yeah. So these codes have been particularly selected for representing positive and negative effects of parenting. So we can now actually look at the just the codes. And of course, it's easy to look at the content, as I just have been showing by just double clicking on a code. I'm just working with the, with the labels right now. But of course, there's always the data behind it, and you can query the data and look for the actual content once you start aggregating your data. This is what we're going to do now. Yeah, so we now just focus on the labels and um, think about that. So what I'm showing now is that um, all codes that actually deal with I'm becoming a better person. Um, yeah, I'm more deeply fulfilled and um, now that I'm becoming a better person, but there must be other ones I'm, I'm going to show um, that relate to... <coughs> Oh, these are um, these relate all to um, positive effects of parenting and the deferral of things and and drop in marital quality and negative ones. So what I'm collecting here now are all the positive effects of parenting. And what you can do once you have selected a few, you drag it over to the left side to this to the family for family side and already create a family. Um, and then you can continue selecting more of the uh, positive effects code because as we know, you know, if you if you if you hold down the control key and suddenly your mouse moves somewhere, your finger moves somewhere, all your selection is gone. That's why I suggest you do it um, in steps. Yeah, once you have selected a few, create your family and then continue to select it so you don't lose lose your selection. So I move down now, and um, I'm looking for the other ones. The less carefree I leave on purpose in order to show you how to get out of code that you don't want to have in a code family. Because it can happen that you pick on something or change your mind later on and then you want to move something out of a family. So let's go through here. More accurate self-perception. This is more stress, more conflicts. No, no, no. It's all not positive, but more mature is positive. Personal growth is positive. Questioning yourself and life values, richer life. So these are all positive effects, so we're going to move them over to the positive effects family. So we can now set that family as filter again. So we have that one we don't want. So we select it and then we can then right click on that family and remove selected item from family. This option has been implemented a bit later. It wasn't there from the very beginning. So I can't quite remember the service pack when it came. It might be 7.16 or something like that. The current version in April 2014 is 7.18. So if you're not at 7.1.8 right now, please do update. Um, and in any case, whether you have that option or not, and to see what the newest version is. You could remove items before we had that context menu option, but it only worked via the code family manager. Yeah, so now this is a bit easier to do. So now we have made pre-selection of all the aspects that are positive and can now focus on those and see where do we have codes that we can aggregate. And we want to get rid of some of these codes. 
of course, people are um, afraid of doing that because, as we will see, we will lose those codes. But well, we lose the codes, but we will not lose. Um, the analytic power, you will increase analytic power if you do so. And um, yeah, and it's always, once you have created something, it's always very difficult to let go, but you have to let go, otherwise you end up with a thousand codes and you get lost and you end up with Excel again because you get lost in the software. So what, if you go through here, we see a number of codes that relate to personal growth. So we already have personal growth. So I already got the idea, okay, there is something about personal growth. You see, they have collected three quotations, but they are the ones while coding. Um, I just coded very close to the data. They kind of belong to that. So now I actually can merge the other thing to it. But if I don't set a global filter, I get the whole list So of all codes and potentially the other 500 codes. So I do set a global filter again, so I can really focus on my pre-selection of positive effects of parenting. So now I've set right click and select merge, then only the positive effects appear, and I can uh, select those that relate to personal growth. So becoming a better person, um, getting to know oneself has brought the best in me, and it, uh, more than I was before. No accurate self-perception and understanding. No, understanding my parents, but it doesn't belong there. Questioning your life and, <coughs> and values. So now you see what's happening. The whole list is now much shorter. We only have 13 codes left. And here we have collected some more on the personal growth. So we have nine quotations here. So now we can look through our reduced code, code list and see are the other elements we can ag actually aggregate? Where are there things? Where are there more things that we can aggregate? Here we have, for example, um, some instances on um, improved relationship, like close marriage relation, uh, love my parents more, better relationships, or understand my parents better than before. So I'm rename the code now to improved relations and merge those other ones ones that are similar speak to the same aspects into it so whether you rename it for or after merging doesn't matter so i'm looking now through with uh, there's some more instances there are only three instances here but you know we code on and then there we might collect some for the instance. So I clicked F5, so this is now sorted in alphabetic um, order again. So you don't actually have to be afraid of merging, even though the underlying codes are lost uh, in a sense. But once you double click on a code now, and we have collected here three quotations, I mean, that's not that many yet, or in the other ones, nine, you can double click and you add the original context. So people are often afraid of of merging because um, they feel, yeah, they lose something. It's always difficult to let go of something that you have um, created. Um, but yeah, it's um, very difficult to deal with, um, with a thousand codes and you cannot run any analysis. So if you watch or any further uh, analysis, if you watch the analysis and we use, uh, you will notice that we can't really, well, what do you want to query if each, if each code is just an instance? So here I'm showing now that, um, yeah, based double click on a code and you're right at the original data and not at your summary of the data. So that's actually much better. Yeah, you have a much more succinct uh, code list that you can work with, so you can do further analysis on, and you write at your data. So here now I show the nine quotations of personal growth. So it's not your own summary wording, it's the wording of your respondents or whatever, it's in the data and that's much um, better in addition to the gain of what you can do with the coding system. So now here I'm merging now everything on fulfillment I think and um, richer life for the purpose of this exercise 
um, no, that there was positive emotions I merged um, and um, now I'm doing the one on fulfillment and rich life so we're not arguing here about content maybe you might say well it's all not the same meaningful life and, and richer life but just for the sake of showing you how to actually get it down and if you have aggregated too much if you later on feel like well there's two different um, concepts you can also subdivide as I show you before so it's an ongoing process until you actually feel like the codes are right now um, the, the way you want to have them so I renamed them into um, and added this meaningful life into it and always remember you have the definition field you can describe what your ideas are behind the codes yeah it's just at the bottom of your list here and you can write it so in order to the for these codes to show up in the list together we have to work with the prefixes now and now i'm actually using copy and paste here so of course you can do that as well So I'm copying it now. I think I didn't press the control key. I pressed any some other buttons here because I wasn't watching my only watching the screen and not my keyboard. So I think I have to do this again now. Control C. And now it works. And control V. And to add the prefixes here. So once I take out the filter, all of these codes are in alphabetic order for what we're still missing is the main category, which we have to add now manually as a new code. And as always, I use capital letters, effects positive. And um, now it shows up at the top. Yeah, and added two spaces again. And I give it a color of its own. What do I choose here now? I think it's gonna end up being pink. And <clears throat> now I can take out the filter, right click on your family and show all codes and voila, we see our sorted and structured codes already. I know the other ones are still unsorted in the list, the black ones, and we can now continue to focus on those and to get it done step by step to move into a structured and sorted code list. Yeah, so the colors you can use for different purposes throughout the project, but this um, is one way I, I like to use them so I can really see what's already sorted and structured and what I still need to work on. So now we have to wait what's happening on the screen. I'm showing you now the um, already coded quick tour project which you can also access from the help menu where you can see um, the whole structure in place so all the categories here and here I use always like most different colors so if it's a light green and dark green so you don't see the difference so I use orange and green and then blue again and and so on so sometimes the colors match meaning but oftentimes it's, it's also just for visibility um, in the code manager yeah <clears throat> and here for the effects of parenting I use a brighter orange and lighter orange because the same kind of category still but um, yeah the, we have two aspects um, here and in some other data sets actually I make two categories out of that I think in the book it is the case I actually work with it a bit differently yeah so the um yeah code families on the right hand side are also indicated as soon as i highlight a code here you see that bright um yellow square and you know in terms of numbers i'm always saying you know 150 250 codes some project need some more codes it always depends on the on the variability of your data um, and 12 to 25 categories. What I'm pointing out here is my attribute codes, which are necessary for this type of data because we have block data and I needed a code 
for gender or whether somebody has children or, or doesn't have children and I call it for a number of, of um, children and, and uh, gender of children and so on. So here between the lines we always have a different post. It's not case-based data. We have you know, 150 people within one document so we need to code for that. Yeah, and um, yeah, here you can see the codes on the side um, that indicate uh, gender, for example, female, and this person doesn't have children yet. So I could kind of generate that information from the context of the data. If you have case-based data, like classical interview study or importing surveys, like this example here in um, in the exam sample project, yeah, then you have to work with PD families. So we have case three and you see all the, the social demographic variables for case three. So depending on your data, you have to work differently. You either have to code for things like male or female, but don't do this for case-based data. I see that um, at times that just people just code header information. Um, that doesn't, uh, it's not very useful in, in terms of querying the data later. So if you have interview data, um, or journal articles where you have um, the article, the author, the year, or documents by time, or documents by type of documents, um, whether they are letters or whether they're from the internet or wherever they're coming from, sources. All of these are indicators for PD families. But if it's, if you have different types of data within one document, for example, then you have to solve it via coding. And this also has an effect on the tools you're going to use later. So we will analyze the case-based data of the sample data set differently than the block data. Yeah, we will use um, the code co-occurrence explorer for comparing the attributes with some contents, whereas we need the code speed table to do that with case-based data. I will show that in um, the videos on analysis, um, where you will see the, the difference in how to handle different types of data.